Hey, welcome to I'm That Mom, the podcast about motherhood without the pressure of perfection. My name is Katie. I'm a self-taught entrepreneur who started my baby company while pregnant and grew it to an eight-figure business as a single mom of three. Join us as we discuss the fun, funny, and messy parts of motherhood. We're certainly not experts. We're just here to support all the moms and hopefully, collectively, we don't completely f*** it up. Okay, so we're going to talk about things new moms should not freak out about. And I think this is like, so we're going to take out the pregnancy freak out part. Like the moment the baby's born at the hospital, what are the things that happen that really is like, calm down, mama. Like, I swear this is normal. Yeah. You're more recent. So what's, do you remember your most like, oh my God, first baby moment? Oh, the first one? where I felt like I couldn't figure out what to Google to help me yeah, um, was probably the first diaper rash, honestly. But in the hospital? Oh, like in the hospital. Shoot. Okay. Okay, but diaper rash is good. Let's do that one first because I feel like that's something that happens to almost every single mom. And, and it goes from bad to like really bad bleeding, babies crying and moms crying like in an hour. Yeah. No, I freaked out, called the pediatrician and she was really nice. She let us come in. (laughs) She's like, do you have fever? No. (laughs) I know. But they were so nice. They were like, okay, mom, come on in. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Come on in, mom. We're going to show you about diaper rash cream. Yeah. I remember um, my, I mean, mine would get really bad diaper rash. And the thing that worked the best for me, honestly, was, and I tried all the creams, like I'm sure you did too. Yeah. And there was definitely a favorite. Um, I actually liked Dr. Smith's, which, so remember my youngest is 10. So there's like all kinds of like better oh, yeah. butt creams out now than there was. But the thing that worked the best for me was just laying the baby like on a towel after her bath or, you know, diaper change, especially a messy diaper change and letting them air dry. Yes. Same rule for breastfeeding when you get like the nipple, you know, thing is just letting them air dry does so much for it because I think it's the moisture that kind of causes the rashes and the irritation. But yeah, no, that's what we ended up doing to help with her diaper rash. And it was good because then we did like skin to skin and like just like kind of hung out. As you're crying, thinking you're a horrible mom because they have diaper rash. I know. (laughs) And diaper rash can happen even if you change your diaper every hour. It's not even something that is like, oh, you did something wrong. It's just a sensitive skin thing. No, yeah. They're sitting in there like pee and poop. Like I'd have diaper rash. I get diaper rash if it's hot outside. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Don't lie, you do too. Okay, so... I was thinking we were going to start with hospital. And so on the like subject of diapers, let's talk first poop. Do you remember that meconium poop? Like the first one where you're like, oh yeah, I thought it for my very first baby. I thought it was going to be like, oh, they pooped. It's so cute. And like a one wiper, like, (laughs) like I'm going to take my one wipe and just like clean it. And it's like, perfect. That Mm -hmm. meconium poop stuff, when they say it's like tar, it is you have to it's take gross. your nails into your wipey and like scrape it. It's gross. And I don't know which is worse, scraping that meconium poop from a baby girl or a baby boy. Both are very... Ooh, you I only have the experience with the girl, but... I know. Oh my God, moms, get ready. It is a thing. And I highly recommend you give dad that job because usually it happens in the first 24 hours. Yeah. And so either way, mom, vaginal, C-section, whatever, is in bed. She should be doing nothing except holding that baby and feeding the baby. Dad, yeah. first duty, for sure, diaper change. But oh yeah, yeah, mom's like, don't freak out if dad's like, it's black because you think poop should be yes. a certain way. And the funny thing about baby poop is it can change colors. If you're breastfed, if you're bottle fed, if you're, I mean, anything can change the color and texture. Yeah. Um, breastfed babies have very like cottage cheesy kind of poop. Do you remember? The bird seed. That's yeah. what we called it. It's so gross because you have to like scrape out the chunks and the like liquid. And Kevin it. would be like, did y'all eat Blech. bird seed or what is happening in her <laughs> yes. diaper right now? Yes. And then the second you start formula or if baby's constipated even with breast milk, it gets more solid. It's more creamy. I don't know. No matter what, it can explode up their back. That's a yep. thing. Do not freak out. If one day you walk in and baby has poop up, yellow poop up their outfit six inches from the top of their diaper. Oh, yeah. It happens. Yeah. Um, Okay. So what else? Um, Oh, uh, cradle cap. Did your babies have that? 
Um, yes, but it didn't come like at first. She Let's ex- explain what cr- cradle cap okay. is. Because that for a new mom would be like, what? Like cradle crap? <laughs> cradle crap? It is crappy. I'll say that because no, you're yeah, perfect. No, yeah, you feel really bad. You feel really bad, but you want to explain it? Yeah, so I mean... I think it's just like when their skin starts to peel because there's like a buildup of oil in their hair and everything. And and like, like going just, from in your womb, like of like all this moisture and yeah. like perfect skin. And then, I mean, my skin freaks out when the season changes. So it's definitely normal. No big deal. If your baby's scalp starts peeling like a lizard. Yeah. No, they make <laughs> the little like exfoliator, like yeah. sponges that are like not like crazy exfoliating but like enough for the baby you and can then, kind of brush it out yeah I mean there's you don't ever want to exfoliate it like really like the way no. we exfoliate our skin um and it's normal it's totally normal some babies get it some don't if your baby does not shed its skin like a lizard <laughs> it's normal too uh, you know back going back well, to like the whole reason we're having this conversation is don't freak out if your yeah. baby has crazy poops don't freak out it's normal and it's things you don't even think about Googling when you're pregnant because nobody's like, let me tell you about baby's first poop. Like, it's in the hospital. Yeah. Baby nurses come in and you're like shock factor because you just scraped tar off your baby's butt. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah. And they're like proud. They're like, yay. Yeah. Poop. No, they're like, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, okay. I wrote down a list of like my um, big ones. I feel like, why is this revolving around poop? So I wrote down... The three things baby do babies do the most just so eat sleep poop and it's like a repeat, yeah. literally. They eat, they sleep, they poop. Actually, it's sleep, eat, poop, sleep, eat, poop. Yeah, right. Full yes. cycle. Do not freak out if you feel like that is your cycle in the first. I'd say up to four months. Four months is kind of when they wake up and they start to have like awake moments like not sleeping all the time yeah. you know they'll like smile back at you or yeah like start to giggle things yes. like that yeah they're but, not just but chilling they're just chill- yeah and it's <laughs> actually kind of that those first few weeks are very misleading because you're like I got this this is <laughs> easy or well if baby's sleeping let's say if baby is in the normal cycle of eat sleep poop repeat right then yeah it's not so bad. You're exhausted, but that's it. You know, and if they don't, if they change that rhythm or they change that schedule, um, you know, don't freak out that they don't do much really, I think was my kind of point. Well, yeah. And their schedule changes like so much. Like we had read it like a few different books on like recommended schedules and it was like, it changed like every like four weeks, I think. Like as soon as you got yes. on the schedule, she changed. Yeah. Then it was like, oh, okay, now her wake window <laughs> needs to be like a little bit longer or like she needs a little bit more milk now. And then like that extra two ounces of milk changes everything. Yes. Yes. And so, because they're full tummies. Yeah. And they sleep longer. Yeah. I admittedly never read any of the scheduling books. Like I completely winged it per usual. Oh my gosh. I know. But... So I was very much like you let baby sleep when she's tired or he, you feed them when they're hungry. Yeah. I think there's some good like nuggets in there though of those like sleep training books. Like I think probably the happy balance is somewhere in between. Read it, educate yourself on it, but know that within a day baby can change and then don't freak out. Like it's very much go with the punches with the newborn. Well, yeah, and I mean, every baby, like, hits the milestones at different times or, like, has a growth spurt a little earlier mm-hmm. or a little later, and so, like... Or they're snackers yeah. or they're good eaters or they're bad eaters, and then introducing, like, rice cereal or any kind of food help. So, yeah, yeah, I, I guess, like, our overall point is, like, don't freak out. There's no rule. There's no baby should be taking three-hour naps at three months old. Yeah. The, when you read that stuff online, it's just kind of think of it as like guidelines. Like, hey, here's like the average probably starts to hit this milestone at this point. And then I I would give yourself a good six month window, three months before, three months after yeah. where like your baby can fall anywhere in between. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what else? OK, I just remembered what freaked me out at the hospital. What was um, baby acne? Oh, yeah. Because I remember I was feeding her. It was like one of the first times. And I noticed these little red bumps on her. And I thought she was having an allergic reaction to like the milk or like something. 
Yeah. And so I thought she was getting hives everywhere and I freaked out and they like the nurses came in with like this pamphlet and like a one sheeter about on, like baby, baby acne. acne and were like, This is normal, mom. And, At least like, you know you weren't the first one. No, like, they yeah, have a, they were they have a one sheeter. They're like, oh, mom in two A is freaking out over yeah. nothing. And they deliver because they don't want to even explain it. They just give you the one sheet. And you're I like, know. Oh, I feel really stupid right now. I know. I was like, but, okay. Like, yeah. If you're sure. And they're like, we're sure, mom. Same with stork bites. You know how some, did your babies come out with stork bites? That's those red blotchy Yes, marks. she had one on her eyelid, yep. actually. And immediately when they handed her to me, they were like, don't freak out about that. That's yes, normal. It goes away. And I think it's most common, actually, on their eyelids, around their forehead, sometimes right in between their eyebrows. Yeah. And then any spots on their head. Yeah. Um, like in the hairline, which like, to you, like any mom's like, oh, her hair, his hair will hide that one day. But what about the huge, you know, and then yeah. I, I can't even remember when my kids stork bites went away. I just remember they faded. Yeah. I was just going to say, I can't remember either. Right. Except for when they got mad. Do you remember when they're like four or five months old and they start screaming oh and their stork bite like comes back with a vengeance? Like turn like fiery red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So don't freak out. I mean, Think about the environment babies coming from into the world. Yeah. We all want to picture this like perfect Instagram newborn that has like flawless skin, like the skin that I spend all that money on my skincare, right? right? That I put on my face every day. It's because I want that baby soft skin. Yes. And the reality is, is most newborns are born with acne, stork bites, you know, all like all the th- swollen yes. they're not oh. even unswollen for you know no, yeah it, they're all puffy they're and puffy and their eyes are all crazy and also if you have a <laughs> vaginal birth like they could have a little bit of a cone head a little bit <laughs> i've seen do you remember the saturday night live where like the like literally yes. the cone heads and they're bald and the whole thing that would be the upside um to c-section although my first baby I did labor for 24 hours, so he was in the birth canal. And so then he came out C-section and his head was all like sideways. Oh. I know, but they got to go through a really tiny hole. I I know. If they even slightly go crooked, it's like, and their brain all squishes, but Mm -hmm. that's what newborn hats are for. And it all goes back to normal. It all goes back to normal within, oh my gosh, within a week, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the doctors, like, will tell you right away. Yeah, and it will go back. Well, because can you yeah. imagine? Like, moms are just... And you can't say, oh, what's wrong with my baby? I like, know. you're thinking it. And thank God those nurses and doctors are like, this is totally normal. Don't worry, it goes back. Like, they're little... They've got their pamphlets ready. <laughs> they have little shelves in their brain that kind of merge back together, which is actually pretty cool that those can move and overlap to fit through the birth canal. Yeah, for real. Yeah, it is pretty cool. And then, so then on top of their brain, right? Because soft spot is... I want to talk about that. Oh, yeah. You know, the so- where you can see their heart yes. beating. It's so gross. <laughs> freak me out. Yes, because you don't want to touch it, and they say not to brush it too hard, because, I don't know, it's like their brain gross like literally their yeah. brain just hanging out there but <laughs> but don't freak out about the soft spot but i want to touch on the funky head shape because the second you get past the newborn funky head shape now all these moms are worrying about well if it's too much time on the back flat head you know yeah, going with this my sweet baby niece had a helmet and she rocked it it was hot pink and it is so cute and she's even in one of our pictures on the Aww. website but, um, but yeah, they put the helmets on now that help with flathead, which, yeah. so remember like growing Brilliant. up, we slept on our tummies. So none of us had helmets because we didn't have flathead because our moms apparently were momming wrong and put us on our tummies. Debatable. Right? I know. Now, don't put a baby on your tummy and you put them on their back and then they get flatheads and you have helmet. So it's like a whole head crisis in the first year, really. Yeah. No, there's a few It's a kids. miracle we have round heads now. Like, <laughs> what? What is this? What is this generation that we're birthing right now going to look like later on? Oh my God, we overcomplicate things sometimes. Um, but yeah, so soft spot. It is totally normal happens. to see your baby's brain pulsating in the soft spot. Yeah, and that soft spot can be. I mean, I know this is like listening, but if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see like a three inch. I'm holding over my head. <laughs> That's the amount where you can see like their head, like boom, 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 yeah. Boom. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any resemblance of a schedule? We yeah. said that. Moms, yeah. 
really. Just whatever works Give for yourself you. a break. Yeah. There is no such thing as the perfect newborn schedule. Mm-mm. Like, I'm going to repeat that so that we can, like, this should be the start of a reel. There is no such thing as a perfect schedule with a newborn, with a toddler, with a teenager, with your husband, with your life in general. (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm expanding beyond that. It doesn't exist. So get it out of your mind. Yeah. Just go with the flow. Learn to adapt a little bit, which can like be tricky for some people to like let go of that. But I think like if you can, then it'll help everybody. Well, you had it kind of shaken up this weekend because your daughter had hand foot mouth oh, yeah that was a lot of fun yeah we had to cancel her first birthday party oh. and stay home but yeah I did know. you have everything planned oh yeah my whole like guest bedroom is filled with like fiesta decorations oh. still so we're gonna do it again like in like another week or so but yeah I mean did you we... have a meltdown moment or were you just are you good and you're like okay, this isn't the time. We're going to do it next weekend. I mean, like, your main concern is the baby. Obviously, you want, like, them to feel better. But then in the back of my head, I was like, okay, well, we have this going on next weekend, and we can't do it that weekend. And people have already and planned for this, and I'm yeah, coming in town. Exactly. I have to so change the cake. And I'm, like, running through it all in my head, like, oh, cool, yeah. like, great. But at the same time, you're just like, okay, wait, but I have to take care of Grayson first. So Yeah. Well, it's and like, you struggled because, so she had hand, foot, mouth, which if moms, that's something yeah. that's really common in, at daycare and Mother's Day Out has nothing to do with the cleanliness of school, nothing. You can get hand, foot, mouth, even just like at AGB, or well, that's our grocery store. But at the grocery store, it's very contagious. Yep. And it's little blisters that can ha- kids tend to have it outside their mouth. Yeah. Um, mom, and literally it, hands, feet, mouth. Yeah. Like that's where she had all her little bumps and then a fever too. Yep. And yep. then, and it's viral. You can't yeah. take anything for it. We that learned that. That was the craziest thing to mm-hmm here was that it's just like Tylenol and Motrin wait like, it out and mom just, like hang out together yeah. I was like oh, okay you're like but she's not eating and she's not sleeping and yeah but you know it's a perfect example of like you really have to kind of be like remember the movie the matrix where you like bend backwards and bullets are coming at you and you're dodging and yes <laughs> I feel like the first few years really I mean god let's be real like really just kids in general until they're grown adults I'm assuming is like that but you have to be ready I mean there was no keeping her on schedule she wouldn't even eat because her little throat hurt no and it's so funny too like I think also like you have to trust your mom intuition because we were actually supposed to go out that night as my husband's 20 year high school reunion oh god and like a few hours before <laughs> i know i was like i, I liked your roll out your <laughs> eye roll 20 like, year reunion i wasn't <laughs> looking for an excuse to get out of the event but like <laughs> yeah right you oh my god you created a hand foot mouth for your you no you I, what's that you put it into the universe right and like you, yeah i did not manifest that but yeah. But, like, we were supposed to go out that night, and I was just like, man, Grayson is just acting a little bit weird tonight. I think I'm just going to stay home and yeah. hang out with her instead. Yeah. And then, of course, like, a few hours later, we ended up in the ER. So, yeah. like, you just have to, like, trust. Why did you take her to the ER? Um, Because here in San Antonio, our, a lot of the pediatric urgent care is closed at, like, 7 or 8 p.m. Yeah. And then... I like didn't know like our nurse line for our pediatrician connects to the hospital anyway. Oh, and so I and they said bring her in, mom. Yeah, because her fever was like one oh two something. Which like when I got there, the nurses were like, "Oh, that's nothing, sweetie." Okay, so I was just gonna (laughs) say that. So a good word of advice, like that, I was and I had. Even one of my kiddos had a high fever and we had febrile seizures. Do you know what that is? Oh my gosh. Like yeah. where they spike a fever really fast and then it can actually cause seizure. And so I had to learn the hard way. If that, It's very common in, um, I think they said two and three year, or between one and four is kind of the window where it happens the most. But if that happens, you're supposed to just put them down, lay them on their side and sit there. And it is the longest six, oh 60 seconds of your life. Gosh. But... In that and going to the yeah, one time we had a, a ambulance ride to the hospital for it, but I remember the pediatrician there telling me that kids can have so adults like really a high fever like a 104 is crazy, 
kids can have higher fever. And so all the way up to like a, and don't, Look, this is me saying it out loud. So Not look, medical. internet, yeah, internet world out there and all the people. I want to say they said 103.5 was like anything. So basically a 102 on a baby was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're fine. Which yeah. is what the nurse told you. You went in you're like, oh, my God. Because if we had a 102 fever, we'd be. I'd be like, oh, I, yeah, no, yeah. I spent the first like 30 minutes there, like asking my husband, like, am I crazy for bringing us here right now? Am I crazy? No, but and you know, so here's, I wasn't, okay, but. so I would say to any new mom, like, if you're that worried, you know, go yeah. and do the thing. But also in that, I mean, it's so hard because you don't know any different. And so no. like your next baby you're yeah. gonna know, like you're gonna be a pro. And I'll be like, know what oh, hand yeah. in mouth is. Yes, you'll know what hand foot mouth is. You'll know if she has a, you know, he or she has a high fever, like to, you know, get a cool washcloth and and alternate yep. Motrin and Tylenol. But this is all stuff that they don't put in a handbook, and there's no rules. Each child is different. Some kids res- even respond better to Tylenol versus Motrin. Yeah, it's crazy. So, and there's a thousand books you can read about it, but I think our message is really just like take a deep breath, mom. You know, maybe mm-hmm. before you call the ER, you call your mom, I'd recommend. If you're not, yeah. you know, maybe don't call your mom. Call your best friend that's got two kids. or And call the nurse lines. I yes. feel like a lot of places have those now, so you can just, like, a nurse bounce on the call. idea off of them. Absolutely. And then it's ultimately up to you to make the call, like, okay, is this a moment or is it not? And, and that, you know, it's so hard not to freak out. I think that's why we said, let's talk about what not to freak out with a new mom. Yeah. Because there's all these things. There's tar poop and there's, you know, blow ups and there's cottage cheese poop and there's, you know, pulsating like, brain spots. Yeah. And, baby acne and stork bites and all these things that nobody teaches you in school. Like we spend all this time in school. We have this, you know, education system that doesn't prepare anybody for motherhood. And then we're thrown into it with a couple books and a Google search. And so just know that everybody is just figuring it out. And As Googling. They go and they're Googling. And sometimes Google's not right. That's the worst I know. part is it doesn't even tell you the right answers. It tells you maybe the answers that have been on the internet long enough. Or yeah. maybe the answers that, that these websites are paying for ads. You yeah. know, right? Like you Google something, the first three things that show up are paid search results. And it might be somebody that's saying, you know, something that's their own experience. or the, I mean, I don't know. I just... I don't trust Google anymore. You know what I do is I Google something and I go straight to page three because I'm like, oh, (laughs) right? Yes. (laughs) Like, get rid of the paid people, get rid of the popular opinion, and like, let me get the whole picture. Yep. Right? Yeah. No. I don't know. Just a thought. That and find a pediatrician and make them your best friend. Yeah. You can text. I (laughs) am trying to get you to switch to mine because... It I is. Know. It's a thing. I know. A great pediatrician should offer a service that allows texting so that we can just like text a nurse and pictures and say, is this rash normal? Yes or no. Right. And they yeah. vote like a story. You post stories and go, yes or no. Is this normal? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I would love that. I know. Me too. I would pay for that subscription. I would too. Or even if that was just something that could be moms. Like I don't even need a pediatrician to tell me yes or no. I feel like I could post that and just yeah. have a thousand moms chime in, yes or no, with how they treated it, what they did, and how they interacted, you know, with whatever. Weird poops. Yes. You know, bumps, hand, foot, mouth, fever, all the things. Yeah, forget insurance. Oh I just need a really great mom group that's gonna that's a little bit more experienced than me or with multiple experiences. Yes. So that one mom can say, Oh, well, this worked great for me for cradle cap. And then another mom's like, Oh yeah, but what about this? And then, then you can try what right? works. And then I trust them and it's not Googling. I know. Yeah. Um, okay, last thing I wrote down, umbilical cord. What did yours oh. look like? What is your umbilical cord? <laughs> what did it what did Grayson's umbilical cord look like? Well, this is the thing. Like, I don't even know, like, if hers was normal because, like, I feel like I never saw another baby's umbilical cord. Really? Until, like, but we see them now, like, as the newborns come yeah, in. Yeah, that's true. And we do see them at work now. But, yeah. yeah, 
I don't know. Hers was like a little bit longer. That freaked me out a little bit too, though, actually. Because it's all transparent and gooey. Yeah. And then when hers started falling off, it was like bleeding like yeah. around the edge. And so then I was like, oh my God, it's getting and infected. And you feel like their and, guts are about to fall out. And it. you know, I called the pediatrician again about that. I am learning <laughs> that. <clears throat> I, I'm like choking here. I am learning that about you. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving you lot. straight permission now to like text me pictures and be like, is this normal? And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna vote yes, no. <laughs> they probably see my name on the caller ID, and they're like, "Oh, it's Miss Frankel again." <laughs> Her baby probably had a booger. I She's know. trying to figure out if it's normal or not. That's what happens when you're a first time mom. It does. That's happen. why we're doing this. It does happen. It does happen. <laughs> I had like two of my best friends had babies right around the same time as me. And I remember us always text, because that was even before social media. My oldest is 17. So we didn't have Instagram to like, you know? Yeah. And it was, it was, God, that makes me feel so old. But yeah, it is funny. So umbilical cords come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. Hopefully your doctor cuts it pretty short because changing diapers and having to mess (gasps) with that, because the diaper hits right where the umbilical cord is. It's got that clamp on it. But some little part of your brain makes you think that like if you pull on it, their like intestines are attached and it's going to be guts everywhere. Right? Yeah. Not true. I feel like they're exposed. Now there's a magic potion. So around um, probably two to four weeks, I'd say actually around two weeks, you can go to your pediatrician and they put like this magic (gasps) sauce on it and it dries it up and it comes The silver or something. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. So. I didn't do that, but I have heard that before. If, um. Outies and innies, belly buttons. Do you have an outie or an innie? I have an innie. Me too. And then, but you can Grayson get outies. Has an innie. Yeah. yeah, no, I know outies still happen. Well, and even but. with the umbilical cord, your belly button, baby's belly button, can look like an outie. And when the umbilical cord comes off, it actually sometimes can go back in. So don't work out, don't freak out if your baby's belly button has like a little, like it bubbles out. Yes. It's, it's totally normal. That's so funny Google you say it. that because <laughs> my husband beforehand, before she was born, yeah. he was like, she better cut the umbilical cord good. Like, I don't yeah. want her to have an Audi. And I'm like, she'll be fine. He's like, yeah, but like, do you think we could like pay her a little extra on the side oh or something God. to like make sure it's an Indian? Bribe like, the doctor. She's going to cut it normally. Like, we don't need to pay extra also, for Also, isn't an it innie. dad that cuts it? They still do that, right? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. That's they, true. Yeah. So I'm like, this is on you, actually. But in the moment, in the moment, nobody's thinking like, can you scoot your hand down a little bit so that I can get as close of a cut? I know. Like, in the moment yeah. you're just like oh my baby's here yeah and, you know they probably take it over and they're like that dad really messed up that umbilical cord <laughs> <Can you imagine? laughs> like, yeah like, the mom nurse is like I'm gonna fix this she'll thank me later oh um, little man. magic moments well I don't know yeah I feel like those are the big things that we covered I mean that's pretty good yeah just moral of the story don't freak out don't there freak is out. so many weird random things that is going to happen with a newborn things that we haven't even talked about really yeah I mean you can't really cover it all but I feel like those are the most common things especially like from hospital to like the first like four to six months at home yeah especially if you're at daycare like things are gonna happen oh my that's a whole nother podcast just go with the flow yeah (laughs) yes that is a whole nother thing but yeah go with the flow you know don't stress that's kind of that's the message we want is helping moms, you know, figure out that nobody knows the right answers. Mm-hmm. No mom has a first time baby unless she like read her whole pregnancy and asked a thousand polls and all the things like, you know, you still, you just don't know what to expect and yeah. you don't know what you're dealing with until the moment. You don't know when your baby's born, if they're going to have baby acne or not, you know? And so yep. all you can do is try to educate yourself, talk to your friends, talk to your mom, you know, and And be aware that, oh, okay, I heard about this rash, right? Yeah. I heard about a rash you can get, and it looks like X, Y, Z, so that when it happens, you don't think she was, like, rolling in poison ivy, and you're like, oh, I feel like this is the symptoms, you know? And then you're just more prepared, and that gives moms confidence. Don't forget, you can check out Caden Lane, our brand, at CadenLane.com, on all the social channels, most of them named Caden Lane. I'm that mom. Subscribe, follow us, leave a review, guys. Like, we'd love to hear what you thought. 
what you'd like to hear more of. And we just launched our new blog website too, imthatmom.com. We did, where there's lots of good feedback and ideas on how to make your job as a mom easier. Um, All the things. We'll see you soon.